Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of my Tools for Life series. Um, this is just going to be a hodgepodge of uh, life coaching topics, psychology, just a little bit of everything. So today's topic is the highly sensitive person. And excuse me while I get to my notes. Um, my videos are usually 50% typed up notes that I can look at and articles and 50% winging it, so we'll see how it goes tonight. But um, I have always been a very sensitive person my whole life. Um, just felt things very deeply, and like when it came to books or music or movies, I would just get totally immersed in them, and and I would just, just really drink them in. Um, in my adult years, I came across uh, the, the book and the movie Anne of Green Gables, and it's just really one of my favorites. And I think if you read that or watch it, that really gives you a sense of who I am as a person. Um, for instance, Anne doesn't like her name. It, she thinks it's boring, spelled A-N-N. -N. So she says, I'm Anne with an E. She names um, everything in her environment, a body of water, a plant, a forest. And at one part in the story, uh, she lies down in a boat uh, closes her eyes and she's got a bouquet of flowers uh, clasped at her uh, waist and she starts um, reciting the Lady of Shalott poem. So her friends push the boat off of the shore and she starts drifting and she's very into it and she almost drowns and I'm thinking that's exactly something that I would have done when I was young. Uh, you know, reenact um, poetry or something dramatic, and yeah, I probably would have almost drowned as well. Um, so, like I said, I've always been very sensitive. Um, I think for the average person, and I'm only guessing, um, you know, they might see a news story that's, that's really sad or disturbing, and they might think, oh, you know, that's really sad. But then, you know, they'll go on with their evening and everything. Um, but for people like me, we might be really affected, like, um, it might even throw us into a depression for the rest of the night, and we'll ruminate over it, and just really take it to heart, and maybe not even just that evening, um, it might go on for a, a few days, it's like, I try to explain it, I feel with the intensity of a thousand suns, um, there's, there's no in-between for me. It's it's either high or low. Um, on the good side, you know, you feel positive emotions uh, very deeply. But then, of course, you always feel the, the negative emotions very deeply as well. And I swear this is not a shameless plug for um, my poetry book, but um, this was my first poetry book that I published uh, last December. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is because it was really born out of a phrase that came into my head many years ago when I was dealing with some really intense emotions and the phrase popped up, I'm an emotional girl, I'm much too sensitive for this world. And I thought, you know, that that's really me, you know. And I've kept it in my head for years and I'm, I was like, you know, that would make a really good name for a record album. And last year, I was like, on what plane of existence am I ever going to record an album? <laughs> I um, I don't know how to play the guitar anymore. I used to take lessons, but I forgot everything. I can't sing. I can't write music. So I decided to put it in a poem. So um, actually, there are several poems um, in my book that refer to living life as a highly sensitive person. So I'm just going to read um, the title poem to you. An Emotional Girl I am an emotional girl, much too sensitive for this world. I tried to bury the part of me that felt too much, but it wouldn't stay buried. I tried to tie it up, but the strings wouldn't hold. I tried to drown it, but it wouldn't stay under. It rose to the surface where it's here to stay. I can't help it. I was born this way. Um, so... 
Um, like I said, I've always been sensitive, and then now I'm going to read the um, the technical definition of a highly sensitive person. Um, it's a term for those who are thought to have an increased or deeper central nervous system sensitivity to physical, emotional, or social stimuli. Some refer to this as having sensory processing sensitivity, or SPS for short. So um, this is actually categorized as a personality trait. But um, I'm actually with uh, another HSP in my relationship, and we agree that um, it's kind of a misnomer to call it, um, we think, to call it a personality trait. We think it's something, um, it should uh, carry a much heavier term. We're not exactly sure what, but, um, you know, we think it's it's more than a personality trait. Um I have a friend whose son is autistic, you know, and in the past I've heard her talk about um, how sensitive he is to external stimuli, um, loud sounds, different smells, and, you know, I was thinking, I can really relate to that um, because I'm very sensitive to external stimuli, and I recently did some research and found that, uh, like autistic people, we actually process information differently in our brains. There's actually a physiological difference in our brain um, from other people. And um, this this term was first uh, coined in about 1991 by um, a Dr. Elaine Aaron. And um, she said that about 15 to 20 percent of the population are highly sensitive people. And um, I feel really vindicated um, knowing that my brain is different. I really can't help the way I am. And I don't ever try to use it as an excuse. Um, but I try to say, look, you know, I really can't help it. This is how I'm hardwired. It's, it, it's just who I am. And um, research actually found that uh, in brain scans of highly sensitive people, there's uh, differences in the level of neuroactivity in the brains of HSPs compared with non-HSPs. And um, throughout life, we may have been erroneously diagnosed with mental disorders, such as bipolar, depression, anxiety, um, and that's not always necessarily true. Um, so I, you know, it just blows me away to find out all of these years, you know, my brain processes things differently uh, from other people. And let's see, I'm looking at my notes here. Okay, and um, they also found, let me open up the right article here. Let's see. Okay, so they actually found, like I said, uh, a difference between the highly sensitive brain and the typical brain. And they found um, four differences um, in the brain um, relating to chemicals. And I'm just going to read this to you. First of all, it says our brains respond to dopamine differently. Dopamine is the brain's reward chemical. Simply put, it drives you to want to do certain things, then gives you a sense of victory or pleasure when you do them. Many of the genes involved in high sensitivity affect how your body uses dopamine. In ways we don't yet fully understand, HSPs are likely less driven by external rewards than non-HSPs. Rewards are the gold stickers of life. For example, a job promotion, a paycheck, or inclusion into a social group. Similar to introverts, HSPs are simply not as excited by the things that many others chase. Um, this is part of what allows HSPs to hold back and be thoughtful and observant while they process information. It also likely prevents them from being drawn to the same highly stimulating situations that end up overwhelming them. If you're an HSP and you don't find yourself very interested in a loud party or taking risks, you have your dopamine system to thank. Um, number two, your mirror neurons are more active. And I should say that uh, this is an article uh, called Highly Sensitive 
Refuge, uh, written by Andre Solo. Um, number two, your mirror neurons are more active. Mirror neurons play a big role in the HSP brain. They help us understand what someone is doing or experiencing based on their actions. Essentially, these brain cells compare the other person's behavior with times you yourselves have behaved that way effectively, mirroring them to figure out what's going on for them. That's an important job for a lot of reasons, but one of the other things it does in humans is allows us to feel empathy and compassion for others. When we recognize the pain or joy someone is going through and relate to it, it's because of the system. More mere neuron activity means a more empathetic person like an HSP. HSPs don't necessarily have more mere neurons than others, rather their systems are more active. Uh, in 2014, uh, brain imaging research found that HSPs had consistently higher levels of activity in key parts of the brain related to social and emotional processing. This higher level of activity kicked in even in tasks involving strangers, meaning HSPs can easily extend compassion to people they don't personally know. The effect was still highest with loved ones, however, and uh, boy, can I re relate to this. Um, I feel compassion for people I know. I feel compassion for people I don't know. I feel compassion for people I read about. I remember years ago um, reading about the Polly Kloss case in California where uh, a young girl was kidnapped from her bedroom and uh, murdered. And it just, it just really made me so sad. And I, I think I started to cry. And my husband at the time said, you know, why are you crying? You don't even know this person. And that's, that's just who we are, how we are, um, just has this, we have this such depth of feeling. Um, we can't help it. Um, number three, you really do experience emotions more vividly. Hidden away in the front of the brain is a fascinating area called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. This area is hooked into several systems involving your emotions, your values, and processing sensory data. When we say that highly sensitive people process things more deeply than others, there's a good chance it happens right here. Um, while the role of the VMPFC is not yet completely understood, it's definitely associated with emotional regulation, and it enhances the things we experience with a certain emotional vividness. Everyone experiences life more vividly during emotional moments, which is really interesting. I'm just going to insert this here. I have a Haunted channel, and uh, one of the, the most scientific explanations that I've read um, uh, for Ghost is that in times of great emotional distress, our... Um, you know, our bodies emit more energy, which might be able to later be stored in um, surrounding objects and be emitted under the right conditions. And um, also related to that, I have a really good memory, um, which is a blessing and a curse because, you know, I can remember things like they were yesterday, uh, good and bad. And my own personal theory is because we feel so deeply these things, uh, you know, memories and experiences just imprint themselves um, even harder in our brains so we do remember them. You know, I used to think that everybody could remember everything. Um, you know, I, I helped plan a lot of my, um, my high school reunions and uh, like I said, I can remember, I can remember things like it was yesterday, conversations in the hallways, what people were wearing, um, all sorts of things. And I guess I just expected everyone to have that level of memory and, you know, I talked to some people who have like no memory of school whatsoever. Um, so it's just really interesting. Um, number four, other people are the brightest things on your radar. For less sensitive people, it's easy to tune out other people. But for an HSP, almost everything about the brain is wired to notice and interpret others. This is clear from the many other parts of the brain that get extra active for HSPs in social situations. For example, the brain imaging study mentioned above also showed increased, increased activity in the cingulate area and the insula. 
two areas that together may form our seat of consciousness and moment-to-moment -moment awareness. For HSPs, these areas become far more active in response to images of other people, especially those exhibiting a relevant social or emotional cue. In other words, highly sensitive people actually become more alert, almost more conscious in a social context. If you're an HSP, other people are the brightest things on your radar. Oh, that's so true. Um, now I'm going to skip to another article, and you might be wondering, well, how do I know if I'm an HSP? So I'm going to read some of the traits um, from one of the from a couple of these articles um, because I didn't think uh, individually the lists were uh, very comprehensive or completely comprehensive. So I liked um, these two different lists. So, um, like we said, they feel more deeply, or we feel more deeply, um, which I already went through. Um, we're very intuitive, we go very deep inside to try to figure things out. Now, um, in the last couple of years of my life, I actually wish I weren't so intuitive because I've actually... Um, seen some really bad things coming in my life. I could sense them. I could feel them. I knew they were coming and they were bad things. Um, bad things that I didn't want to want to be right about. Catastrophic things. And, you know, I, I was just like, you know what, I don't want to be intuitive anymore. And I, there are some things I don't want to be right about. Um, so we're very intuitive. Two, uh, we're more emotionally reactive. Uh, people who are highly sensitive will react more in a situation. For instance, they will have more empathy and feel more concern for a friend's problems, according to Elaine Aaron. They may also have more concern about how another person may be re reacting in the face of a negative event. Now, I'm not sure if people-pleasing goes along with highly sensitive people, but I am definitely a people-pleaser. Um, so a lot of times I will put other people's happiness over my own um, just to make sure they're happy. Um, three, they're probably used to hearing, don't take things so personally, and why are you so sensitive? Uh, and I thought this was interesting. Depending on the culture, sensitivity can be perceived as an asset or a negative trait. And I'll interject here that um, it's for the same reason that people in my life love me as they hate me, um, that, that feeling, uh, that of, um, just feeling so deeply. And one thing that, um, the highly sensitive person is prone to experience, experiencing is gaslighting. And, um, I actually watched part of, um, an old movie called Gaslight, um, 1944, where that term actually came from. And it was based on a play, and the basic plot is a man is trying to convince his wife that she's crazy. Um, he keeps telling her that she's forgetting things, that she's losing things, and she's really not. Um, but that's where the term gaslighting comes in. And then, um, you know, I like this quote. Um, I'll clean it up a little, but it says, I'm not too sensitive, you're just a jerk. And it's not that I necessarily think that people are jerks, but um, sometimes people act like jerks when they know that you're um, a sensitive person. They think that they can say whatever they want to you in any manner they want, and if it's impolite uh, or unkind uh, and you react or respond negatively to it, they automatically gaslight you and tell you you're too sensitive. Well, Seriously, I'm not that sensitive, but if, you know, if someone's being unkind uh, or not very tactful, that's human nature uh, to respond negatively. So, um, like I said, I'm a people pleaser, and um, I, I try to avoid conflict if I can. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem engaging if need be, but this is usually what happens. This, this is like my cycle with um with people interacting with people um the first time they they say something and they hurt my feelings i'll probably not even say anything and just let it go 
Second time, maybe I'll let it go. Third time, hey, this is getting old. Uh, might not say anything. Still, but okay, maybe the fourth time I've had enough and I'm so pushed that, you know, I explode. And of course, since I didn't say anything previously, this is the conversation. Well, I don't know what's going on with Amy, but I just said this and this. And no, it's not what you just said. It's, it's what you said the time before this and the time before this and the time before this that has just culminated into this big ball of rage. So, um, you know, it's probably a good time to say that um, highly sensitive people um, are not weak, are not pushovers. Um, in my life, I tried very hard to toughen up. And what I ended up doing was instead of um, kind of getting rid of that, that sensitive side, I created a dual side uh, that was basically the polar opposite of my sensitive side. So I've got this very nice, sweet, sensitive top, sensitive side that, you know, loves old Disney movies and likes to collect teddy bears. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I've got what I call this hardcore, very intense side um, who wanted to be in the FBI and chase criminals and um, kind of a, an adrenaline junkie and... Um, kind of a don't mess with me persona or, you know, my loved ones, or I will turn Liam Neeson on you and the movie Taken. So I was talking uh, to my boyfriend earlier and I said, do you think that, you know, because we both have these dual sides that are just polar opposites. And I said, do you think that all highly sensitive people have these, these um, dual sides? And he said, yeah, probably because we do feel things very deeply, like the highs and the lows. So if you are a highly sensitive person, I would like to hear from you. Um, do you have two different sides to your personality or are you just completely the highly sensitive person? Is that your only, um, your only personality? And I, I don't mean that in a multiple personality disordered way, but I think we all have different aspects um, of our personality. So I'm just really interested to hear if that's kind of a normal occurrence or not. Um, this is definitely me. They prefer to exercise solo. solo. So that, that very serious side of me is very intense and very driven, very laser focused on whatever I'm doing. Um, Highly sensitive people may tend to avoid team sports where there's a sense that everyone is watching their every move. Um, I guess I, I, you know, when I was able to play sports before I was injured, you know, I, I think I liked all sports, but I think my favorite one was tennis. I like gymnastics and, you know, those, those are things that you do solo. And, um, you know, for my working out, you know, um, that's not something I, I really ever wanted to do with anybody else because I would go into my own little world and I took it very seriously. So if I were to go to a gym today, um, it's not to be social. I would probably put my earbuds in and just, you know, zone out in my own little world. Now this, this one is kind of ironic because I didn't think this was true at first, but it takes longer for them to make decisions. Well, based on the fact that it took me, I'm not even going to tell you how long it took me to figure out what background I was going to use tonight. Um, and I'll read down a little uh, below this. I wasn't sure, you know, it, that this was me because it was saying that it takes longer for us to make decisions and to do things. They just like a slower pace of life. I'm like, no, I'm kind of the opposite of, of that because my brain moves very fast. It's kind of like a pinball machine with ideas just pinging around in there. So I tend to be, you know, I tend to do things quickly. But then I read, I started to read on and it said, um, uh, highly sensitive people are more aware of subtleties and details that could make decisions harder to make, even if there is no right or wrong decision. For example, it's impossible to choose a wrong flavor of ice cream. Highly sensitive people will still tend to take 
longer to choose because they are weighing every possible outcome. Okay, yeah, that's me. But even further down, they talk about, um, let me find where it is. I hope this is the right one. Oh, it's in the, actually, I think it's in the other article. But I absolutely have to read it because this is definitely me. Okay, here it is. Slower, simpler pace of life. So they're talking about, you know, which item to buy at the grocery store. Um, and it says that we have to take into consideration a mountain of choices, a nutrition information price, and how we feel about chicken noodle soup. And this is me to a T. Suddenly their mind flashes to chickens being cooped up in tiny cages and slaughtered, and they must take a few beats to ponder if they can live with this reality on their dinner plate or not. All of this takes time. I'm like, okay, you got me there. I guess it just really depends on what it is with me. Um, so yeah, obviously some things do take longer. Um, then go back to the other article. Um, again, with decision making, and on that note, they are more upset if they make a bad or wrong decision. Uh, yeah, that's pretty true for me. You know that uncomfortable feeling you get after you realize you've made a bad decision. For highly sensitive people, that emotion is amplified because the emotional reactivity is higher. That is so true with me. And, and it could be something as simple as feeling like I ordered the wrong thing at dinner, which is ludicrous. But we ruminate over the, the most minor things or what other people would consider minor that they wouldn't even think about. Um, number seven, they're extremely detail-oriented. Highly sensitive people are the first ones to notice the details in a room, the new shoes that you're wearing or a change in weather. Yeah, that's definitely me. Um, eight, not all highly sensitive people are introverts. In fact, about 30% of highly sensitive people are extroverts, according to Erin. She explains that many times highly sensitive people who are also extroverts grew up in a close-knit community whether it be a cul-de-sac, small town, or with a parent who worked as a minister or rabbi, and thus would interact with a lot of people. Um, to this day, I still can't figure out what I am. Um, some things, I, sometimes I feel like I'm an extrovert, but then other times I feel like I'm an introvert. Um, it depends, I guess, on the situation, um, how well I know people. I was telling my boyfriend earlier that I read that Highly sensitive people are very outgoing with people they trust. And I, I feel like that's definitely true for me. But I, I feel too like I can be semi-outgoing uh, with people I don't know as well. Um, like I said, it just really depends on the, the setting, the circumstances. Now, this is really not me. They work well in team environments. Um, I'm going to say it. I don't want to say I've never been a team player, but um, I've always preferred to work on my own. Uh, just tell me what you want to do and let me do it kind of thing. Uh, I don't like having to run things by a lot of people. I like to, I like a creative license, um, you know, so it's not that I can't work um, in a team environment, but um, that's definitely really not me. Um, 10, they're more prone to anxiety or depression, but only if they've had a lot of past negative experience. I'm, I'm going to disagree with that, um, because I think with a highly sensitive person, I think even if they had, you know, a really happy life and not a lot of negative experiences, they, they're still going to react very deeply to, um, to... Uh, bad news or something like that. So I don't really agree with that. Um, let's see. Number 11. Uh-oh, whoops. That annoying sound is probably significantly more annoying to a highly sensitive person. Um, I don't know. It's really weird because... I do get overwhelmed uh, sometimes when there's a lot of external stimuli, but at the same time, 
Las Vegas is one of my very favorite places to visit. And I don't know if it's just that I haven't traveled, you know, much in the, the last several years or whatever. And I'm just thrilled to be on a vacation. But, um, you know, I guess it depends, too. If I know that I'm going to go to a place that has a lot of external stimuli, I can kind of prepare myself. Um, but if I get to, uh, you know somewhere where I don't expect there to be a lot of chaos and, and external stimuli, then that can be very overwhelming. Um, so again, I think it just really, really depends. Um, this one, not me. Um, 12, violent movies are the worst. Um, I actually really love gritty, realistic movies. Um, you know, some of my favorites in that genre would be, um, the movie Rush with Jason Patrick and uh, Jennifer Jason Leigh and also with uh, Jason Patrick, uh, Sleepers, which, and both of those were actually um, based on true stories. Um, but um, I have to be careful what scary movies I watch um, because I have that overactive imagination. So, but then again, I don't know if it's because I cultivated that dual personality, you know, wanting to be in the FBI and try to kind of harden and toughen myself. So, um, you know, I can deal with those things. Um, that, like I said, that might not be typical of an HSP. Now, I, I don't watch the news. I will read the news on the internet, uh, in the newspaper, but I don't watch the news. And, um, it's just a lot more emotional for me, I guess, if I, if I see it, maybe. Um, so maybe that's a little accurate. I don't know. Um, number 13, they cry more easily. Well, you know, when I was, um, uh, very young, I, you know, I, I did cry a lot. And then I learned, you know, that I don't feel it it's a weakness, but a lot of people do view it as a weakness. So I kind of, you know, stopped that. I would just keep my emotions inside. Um, in the last few years, I've, I've cried a lot more though. Uh, they, the last few years have been very stressful. A lot of bad stuff has happened and yeah, I really hate it because I do cry more easily now. And I'm the kind of crier when I cry, I get angry that I'm crying. So that makes me cry harder. But there are probably people that I who've known me for decades who've never seen me cry. Um, let's see. Fifteen. The effects of criticism are especially amplified in highly sensitive people. Um, to a point, I agree with that, especially if I feel like I've let someone down. Um, you know, then that you know I'll get really upset and. They might view that as me taking the criticism too um, personally, but it's it's actually because I feel like I have failed. Um, but I'm also very sensitive to how I'm approached. Um, you know, there's this thing called tact, and, you know, when people don't use it with me, um, yeah, I can be a little reactive. Um so, but, you know, who really does respond to criticism? Now, if it's, if it's presented in a cr constructive way and it's really coming from a good place, then yeah, it's a lot easier to handle. But I think it has a lot to do with people's intentions. Um, are they saying this because they really want to help you or are they saying this because they want to control you? Um, another example of gaslighting. Uh, let's see. Number 16, cubicles. Cubicles equals good. Open office plans equals bad. Um, just like highly sensitive people tend to prefer solo workouts, they may also prefer solo work environments. Well, for me, um, I'm actually disabled with a chronic illness, so I work from home. But yeah, like I said before, I would rather you just tell me what you want me to do and let me go off on, on my own. So I would agree with that one for myself.
And that is the end of that article. And then, let's see. Difference between. Okay. So now, actually, I guess I didn't have two articles that talked about the traits. Um, now, what I want to talk about is, we've talked a lot about um, the, the negatives of the highly sensitive person. And the other night, I was reading an article, and it was talking about the negatives. And they said, well, there are a lot of positives to being uh, a highly sensitive person but we're not going to talk about them. And I said, well, shoot, you know, that sucks. So um, I had to, had to find another article. So let me close this. I've got about 10 windows um, open. So now I'm going to talk about the good things um, that come with being a highly sensitive person. Let's see. Oh, they didn't number them. Okay. So I've got to kind of go through this here. Um, let's see. Let me go. Oh, there. They did number them. Okay. I didn't scroll down. Um, and this can be a good or bad thing as we talked about, intuition. Um, like I said, you know, there have been moments recently where I really wish that I wasn't intuitive. But um, it can be used um, for good, too. But it says, HSPs are readers of people's energy to the point of people asking if we are psychic because of our depth of intuition, which is... Um, and it says that HSPs just know things that other people who aren't highly sensitive don't know. You know, and that may, makes me uh, think of the movie Silence of the Lambs. I remember seeing that, and I remember how impressed everybody was with um, Hannibal Lecter and how he was able to just really size up uh, Jodie Foster's character. Um, and I thought, I think a lot of that's just intuition he just he's a good listener and he's good at sizing people up not realizing that not everybody is able to do that uh, and I always kind of joke that it's a good thing that I use my uh, my intuition and my my knowledge of people for good and not bad uh, because we can surmise a, a lot of different things from people what they say and a lot of times what they don't say um, you know, body language. Uh, number two, humor. I really I like this. It says that we can be hilarious, especially in a quirky, nerdy, punny way. And um, I think they're telling me that I should go ahead and um, follow my dream of being a stand-up comic. So I like that one. Number three, empathy. Uh, the intrinsic empathy HSPs have is refreshing. HSPs are naturally phenomenal at caring. They can't, for example, watch a scene in which a person or animal is being hurt. Um, definitely, I can't watch um, an animal being hurt um, in a movie. I guess it depends on uh, if it's a good person or bad person, uh, you know, what's happening to them. Um, being a witness to another suffering is a call to end it, not find entertainment in it. Um, and this is this reminds me of I don't know how I ever thought I would be able to deal with or handle the FBI. All anybody would have to do is grab a, the the criminal would grab a woman in one arm, a puppy in the other, put a gun to both of their heads and say pick. And I'd have to be like, I'm sorry, lady, it's the puppy. So I really don't know how um, I would have handled that job, but it's kind of funny to think. Uh, for environmental awareness, HSPs seek refuge in nature where every sense beautifully activates. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like my I like my nature in doses, but then I also like my really nice hotel rooms with room service. 
And again, that's, that's probably because um, I'm just in desperate need for a vacation. Um, let's see. Number five, appreciation for the little things. And I am really thankful, you know, for this characteristic because um, I am able to find the joy in just little things. Um, let's see. It says you're astutely aware of such microscopic details that others may not even notice what you're reveling in. Um, you think you linger on the variety of oval shapes of raindrops on your windshield and the way the flower bud sways in the breeze. Uh, you're that rarity who without struggle discovers a world in a grain of sand and a microscopic photo of a tiny bug's face will only serve to expand your compassion to all life. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with that. Um, I tried to get some pictures um, of some bee butts and my... Uh, my trees outside because uh, there was a time on the internet where these really cute pictures of bees stuck in a flower with their butts sticking out uh, were really popular and I just thought that was the cutest thing and it made me laugh so I tried to recreate that um, in my front yard but I only uh, succeeded in enraging the bees so that didn't happen so like I said the thing with nature is you know Good sometimes, bad sometimes. Uh, number six, creativity. One benefit of having such a rich internal world is HSP's innate creativity. To the HSP, there's no other way to create or to exist. Creativity is our natural state. To ignore it is to go against the essence of who we are. So say the highly sensitive ones. Um, and I'll say when I'm not able to create, um, I, I get very stressed out and I did another video a while back that when you're dealing with a chronic illness a lot of your life just centers around um, just surviving and you don't really get to move up in the hierarchy of needs when your your whole existence is revolving around just making sure your basic needs get met so that becomes very frustrating for me if if I don't if I don't have that time to, that outlet to be creative in any way. Um, let's see. Uh, number seven, deep friendships. Um, I will say that, you know, I am flawed. I don't always say the right things. Sometimes I can be smarmy, sarcastic, but you're really going to be hard pressed to find someone who cares as much as I do for the people in my life. Um, you can try, but I'm telling you, it's going to be really hard. Um, but like I said, um, for the same reason that, that people love me is the same reason they don't love me uh, is because of that sensitivity. But I think, too, it, it's also not being with the right people, not surrounding yourself with the right people because... A real friend is going to accept you, accept who you are, and they're going to know, you know, your strengths and your weaknesses, and, you know, they're going to know, okay, Amy's really sensitive about this, so, you know, we can't come at her like this, we've got to approach her like this. You know, you really need to be, and really, I think this goes for friends of anyone, not just highly sensitive people. You really need to be around people who accept and respect your your personality, your differences. Um, and that's that's that can be really um, a hard lesson to learn. Um, number eight, desire to nurture. Um, with the innate empathy of HSPs, nurturing others comes naturally. Having a sixth sense of what others need also, lends itself naturally to a joy of nurturing children, animals, the environment, or people in general. Um, I will definitely agree with this uh, for myself. I wasn't always that way. I don't want to say I was unkind, but um, I kind of eventually developed like a very motherly uh, personality, very nurturing um, over the years. Um, so, yeah, I definitely would agree with that. 
Number nine, skillful at observing minor differences and details. Absolutely. And, you know, one reason I wanted to um, join the FBI is because, you know, I, I believe I do possess um, some of the characteristics that would have been helpful in crime solving. Uh, I am intuitive. I am analytical. I do observe minor differences and details. Um, let's see. I don't know why they're, they're talking about nature again, love of nature. Um, like I said, my experiences in nature are kind of 50, 50. It's, it's great if I'm at the beach and you know, the waves are great, but not so great if I'm getting stung by insects. So, um, and this kind of says what I just said, there are trade-offs with just about every aspect of who each of us is, you know, so if we can find like-minded people or people who, who do appreciate and respect your, you know, your personality, um, traits and your quirks, then that's a really great thing. Like I said, my boyfriend and I are both highly sensitive people and, um, we are just so similar and so connected. And, you know, I almost think that the only person that can understand a highly sensitive person is another highly sensitive person, but I could be wrong. Um, so let's see. Okay. And then just real quick, this is what highly sensitive people need to be happy. Uh, and we were talking about a slower, sim simpler pace of life and, um, yeah, and that was about the chicken noodle soup and the chickens. Um, number two, time to wind down after a busy day. Um, you know, because I absorb other people's emotions, um, you know, I love to socialize with my friends and family, but it can be, you know, physically and mentally exhausting too. Um, even if I didn't have a chronic illness, I would still need time to... Uh, wind down and decompress after a busy day. And then tied into this is, um, number three, a calm, quiet space to retreat to. Um, they're talking about, you know, relaxing with a book or something like that. Uh, four, permission to get emotional and have a good cry. Yeah. Like I said, I really don't like crying and showing that side of me, but it can be cathartic. Um, uh, to uh, acknowledge your emotions, what, whatever they are, positive or negative. Um, let's see. Let's see. Number five, time to adjust to change. Um, it says that um, we need some time to adjust to different transitions. And I guess for me, um, again, it just depends on what kind of change it is. Um, let's see number six, close, meaningful relationships. Absolutely. Um, HSPs crave deep connections with others. Uh, in fact, they may get bored or restless in relationships that lack meaningful interaction. However, this doesn't mean that they're prone to relationship hopping. Rather, they may actually work harder to strike up a meaningful conversation with their partner and create intimacy. Um, let's see. Number seven, gentle, healthy way of managing conflict. Um, I've noticed for me that um, when my emotions especially my negative emotions become overwhelming. Uh, some of the things that help me are really watching what I put into my brain, what I watch, what I listen to. Uh, so I'll try to play happy music. Uh, I'll watch happy movies or TV episodes. I will try to um, participate in an activity or hobby that brings me joy. And uh, right now, those things have really been helping me a lot. Uh, let's see. 
a good night's sleep. I don't know what that is, but if you can get it, then that's good for an HSP. Healthy meals, space regularly throughout the day. Yeah, I like my food. Um, 10 caffeine-free, non-alcoholic options. Huh. It says that we're more sensitive to the effects of caffeine and alcohol. Um, that might be true. Um, for normal HSPs uh, with the caffeine, but for me, um, I have extreme fatigue So, uh, with my chronic illness, so caffeine doesn't bring me to like a higher level of energy or anything. Number 11, an outlet for their creative side, which we already talked about. 12, a strong sense of purpose. And that's definitely, definitely something um, that I struggle with. Um, you know, even though I've been disabled for a lot of years, um, I still struggle with feeling like I have a purpose um, because in our society, our um, our value is oftentimes uh, tied into like our jobs, our careers. And since I don't work outside of the home, sometimes I really struggle with that. So, and it says that um, we need we definitely need direction or a purpose, and that's definitely um, true for me. Uh, number 13, which I was just talking about, loved ones who understand and respect our sensitive nature. Um, so it says, because most people are not highly sensitive, they simply don't understand what it's like to get very stressed out by, say, a startling noise, a busy weekend, or a violent scene in a movie. Not everyone will understand, and that's okay. But what an HSP needs is at least a few people, preferably the people closest to them, to get their sensitivity. Someone who not only gets it, but helps protect them from overstimulation. Um, and I'm just going to interject something. Um, I hear a lot about how, you know, the most important thing in a relationship is truth and blah, 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 being truthful. Well, for me, I think that the truth is overrated. Um, because I want you to tell me, oh, honey, that, that little baby bird that you rescued and tried to nurse back to health, um, it flew off. It's fine. You know, don't tell me it died. You know, so, um, it, it helps to be around people who, um, who understand you and respect your nature. Um, number 14, natural surroundings and beauty, um, I've always been guided, you know, by my my senses. I like things that look nice, taste nice, feel nice. So they're talking about creating, um, you know, a, a space where you can really relax. And that's it for that article. And um, I believe that's that's it for this episode. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there, if you're a highly sensitive person and if any of this rings true. Uh, let me know if, if you disagreed with any, any of the characteristics that they were talking about. And let me know if there are other topics you would like for me to discuss. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if you like it. Um, and subscribe.